And now, welcome to Chai with Manju, with your host, Dr. Manju Sheth. Hello and welcome to Chai with Manju. Our guest today is Anu Chitrapu. She's one of the most dynamic leaders of our community. She's also the senior vice president at Bank of America and has won numerous accolades for her work. She's an entrepreneur and influencer with a mission to empower women. She's also the brand new president of Thai Boston, which is of course the world's largest nonprofit dedicated to helping other startups. Let us meet Anu. Anu, welcome. I'm so excited to have you on the show. Thank you, Manju. It's an honor to be here. Okay. So congratulations. You are the second woman president of Thai Boston, but the first one who is so deeply entrenched in our community. You know, you've done leadership roles in AIF, ACL, Saheli, and of course, Nika Awards. So how is this role in Thai Boston going to be different for you? Um, it's a different audience. I mean, the organization is different, but you know, I would say that all the leadership skills that you learn uh, through the other organizations, the same really apply here also, because finally it's knowing the target audience and then doing what is best for them. And uh, Thai is all about um, you know, empowering entrepreneurs and supporting entrepreneurs. And uh, that has been something that uh, I have done for a very long time uh, in my life. Uh, uh, and I'm really honored uh, that they've given me this title. So entrepreneurship is very important, I think, in your life. Your dad was an entrepreneur. Of course, your husband is Rama, is a well-known entrepreneur. And you're a social entrepreneur yourself with your company, Nirvana. So what is it about entrepreneurship that excites you so much? And what are some of the lessons that you've learned that you will be using in your new role? Oh, okay. Yeah, my dad uh, was an entrepreneur and he actually started pretty late uh, in life as an entrepreneur. You know, he used to work um, in a company and then suddenly he decided, yeah, it's time I did something on my own. And he had like four kids. We uh -huh. were, uh, some of us were in college, some in school and, you know, he was a risk taker. And uh, I know that every day was like super exciting in our house because he would like come in and say, well, you know, I got this new client and uh, my oldest sister, Subhaima, she uh, actually joined him uh, to help build the company. So I used to watch them, uh, you know, as I went to college, they'd be sitting late into the night making project reports and uh, getting ready to receive international guests. And um, I mean, just, you know, so much can happen uh, during the journey of entrepreneurship that watching that, uh, just gives you that sense of excitement. And after that, just doing a regular job is not enough. You want that uh, entrepreneurship. And I saw it with uh, Rama also. Uh, with Rama, it was more, um, you know, I want to say it was, a, it was definitely one of those uh, storybook entrepreneurship stories, which started in our basement. Uh, so I used to go, you know, see what he's doing in the basement on the ping pong table. He had all his papers and computer and uh, he came a long way from there. There are highs and there are lows. And um, I think my key learning is during the highs, uh, you should definitely get excited and celebrate. But during the lows, you cannot give up. You have to remember those highs and uh, go back because entrepreneurship, it's not a quick thing. You know, it's a journey and you need to enjoy that journey to be able to undertake it. It's also not for the faint hearted. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, my mother always used to say, uh, don't get into this whole starting your own company. Just work for someone. You know, life will be really good. See, see how, how it is. But we were like, no, we, we want that excitement too. <laughs> Do you think it is you get a little bit of a high like, in a, in a big game or, uh, you know, you don't know what, where the, what's going to happen. Do you get a high like that with entrepreneurship, you think? Um, I think so. I mean, I've, you know, I'll tell you what I saw with like my dad or uh, Rama, right? So when the first client or second client or third, someone signs, it's like, you know, that happiness is just amazing uh, because it's not just about money. It's that someone believed in you or in your product and I think that is where the uh, high comes from. So let me about ask you about Thai then. 
what is your mission there and what are your goals? Would you like to share with our audience as well? Yeah, definitely. Um, so, you know, one thing I found um, in my past experiences with Thai that uh, there is a lot of room for stronger and more partnership uh, with universities. And, you know, we being in Boston, some of the world's best schools are right here. Um, and I think the pipeline for entrepreneurs is actually very strong in Boston and it is in those universities. So uh, I would really like to, um, you know, have like deeper and more relationships uh, in the university area. Uh, that is one, one goal. Uh, the second thing is, you know, Thai already has pretty good, strong branding here in the Boston area. Um, but I would like to maybe, I, I don't want to call it improve. I want to say maybe make it a little different, make it more approachable and um, more people to like come into Thai and know about Thai. So that if you say the word Thai Boston, right, people should know mm -hmm. what uh, that is. So the branding is the second thing. And um, finally, you know, you know this better than anyone else, Manju, having worked with me all these years. Women empowerment is like my number one goal in any yes. organization that I am associated with. So same thing here. Um, and the way I would measure it would be by seeing a percentage increase in the number of women charter members. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, women regular members and also charter membership has increased. But, um, you know, my goal, I have to look at all the numbers, but uh, I really want that number. That would be my mark. Right. To increase. Are you planning to have any uh, special events with women or any groups, things like that? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, today is literally day zero. I think tomorrow onwards is when <laughs> I'm officially president of Thai. But uh, yeah, de definitely uh, a lot of events targeted for women. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. Even though you're becoming the president in the virtual era, I think the tide has turned now. So we can look forward to a lot of wonderful things. So as you said, you know, Anu, I have worked with you for so many years. Um, so while, you know, I admire so many assets that you have and so many qualities. The one that I like is that you get along with everybody, you stay calm, and somehow you know to deal with everyone. I don't see you lose your temper. You understand all the cultures. So what is your secret? Um, you know, I lived all over. So for instance, um, I was born and I grew up in a small town called Asansol in West Bengal. So um, Bengali was the local language and, um, you know, it was probably one of the first languages I learned because that's what uh, we would speak with everyone. But my parents are from Andhra Pradesh, so they insisted we speak Telugu at home. So that, yeah, even though we lived in a place where in those days, you know, there were not many um, Telugu people. In fact, there was a Telugu association there similar to what we have here because of the really small number. So there was Telugu and there was uh, Bengali and... Um, uh, Bihar influence just because uh, geographically Asansol was located close to Bihar. Um, and then we moved down to the south to uh, Tamil Nadu. And my husband is Tamil. Um, and, you know, I went to high school and college in Chennai. So uh, when someone asks me, where are you from? Mm -hmm. You know, I always for a minute, I want to say, wait, what shall I say where I am from? And uh, Rama accuses this, accuses me of this uh, is whenever someone asks me, I, I try to think, where are, where are they from? And let me say, that's where I'm from. So if it's a Tamilian, I say, oh, I'm from Chennai. And if it's Telugu, I say, oh, I'm from Andhra Pradesh. And Bengali, it's like I was born in Asansol. So um, I feel like, you know, we had that uh, uh, multicultural experience very young. Um, and, you know, Boston is a melting pot anyway, so you get ex uh, exposed to a whole lot of more uh, cultures here. So tomorrow is the day one of your presidency. So what is the plan tomorrow with the family? Well, I guess uh, we won't be going out yet. We are not that adventurous. Um, we started uh, having food delivery, so maybe we'll just get some food and all of us will sit together and... Uh, talk about, you know, how this happened and what's in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, now that my kids are older, mm -hmm. they, they give us advice. It's not the other way around. So, <laughs> so Rama is not calling you Madam President? Uh, no, <laughs> not anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me before you go, what is uh, 
the best advice you have ever gotten in your life? And what is the best advice you would give our viewers today? Okay. So um, I'll tell you the best advice I got was from my mom. Okay. Um, and uh, my mom actually did not get a chance to go to uh, college. So she, after school, she was married and, uh, you know, she always uh, felt like, you know, I need education and I didn't have it. I didn't get that opportunity. So mm -hmm. I want to make sure to give my kids the best opportunities in the world uh, possible. So education is very important in our family. And, uh, you know, sometimes you just take opportunity for granted, right? I mean, it's like, okay, yeah, you can go to school, you can go to whichever college you want. There's no um, sort of, you're not like craving for it, right? When things come easy. Um, so when I was uh, doing my MBA at MIT Sloan, um, I had two little kids. So I came home one day, my mom was visiting. So she was here to help me. I came home and I said, oh my God, I have this finance exam and I really don't know what these options are. And I was, and these two kids were like, you know, running around and crying. And I was like, why did I even get into this? And my mom was just sitting and watching me and I had this finance book in my hand and um, she, no sympathy, nothing that, oh, this is so tough because I was coming back to school after a break. She just looked at the book and she said, in that book, is there a definition of what EBITDA is? And that's a finance term. And I was like, why do you want to know about EBITDA? <laughs> uh, you know, she became a stockbroker from home during, uh, after we all left home, just to keep herself occupied. And she was doing really well on the stock market. But there were some terms like EBITDA, et cetera, right? I mean, not having gone to school, she didn't know. So she was actually looking at me like, you got this opportunity and like instead of learning all these you are like sitting here complaining ah, i have two kids how do i get this done that was my biggest learning manju because after that you know whatever opportunity i get i first say i'm so thankful for the opportunity to myself and that makes it only richer right so that i think is the biggest learning um, that i have Again, you know, a lesson that I learned from my mom, she was like, just because you have opportunity or, you know, you've been lucky in life, it's not yours to just take and be happy about it. The happiness will only come and true success will come if you can actually give that opportunity to others. So when I was a very little uh, girl, uh, Manju, I used to go with my mom to Cheshire home. She used to send all my older siblings off to school and then she would do, um, you know, social work in uh, Cheshire home. So she would leave me with all the kids and I would play with the kids there. Um, you know, many of them had uh, several issues, but I never like looked at it that way because I was like, oh, we are all the same. So I really am thankful for that. And I would say to everyone, you know, if you get an opportunity to immerse yourself in any kind of social work, um, it's time for us to pay it forward and we should do it. Oh, that's wonderful. I have to tell you, Anu, I have worked with you for such a long time. You actually walk the talk. So I'm so proud of you. I hope that you go and just break every ceiling in the world and just do the best, uh, be the best that you can be. So thank you so much for coming on the show and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Manju. Thank you for this opportunity and all the good wishes. It means a lot to me. Thank you.